Hi, I'm Tom and I want to talk about the process of balancing radiators. What I want to show in this video is that it's less about balancing radiators and more about balancing heat. Now, most of the radiator balancing articles you find online will tell you that balancing is about ensuring your radiators heat up evenly across your house. They usually go something like this. Step one, open all the lock shields and open all your TOVs. Step two, turn your heating on full blast, whatever full blast means. Step three, run around the house like a maniac trying to write down the order in which your radiators are warming up. Step four, let your heating system go completely cold. And step five, one by one, in the order in which your radiators heated up, tweak their lock shields until there's a 12 degree temperature difference across each radiator. Aside from the difficulty of running around your house trying to note which radiators are warming up first, the list kind of makes sense. But does this process actually balance your system? Well, for the most part, it, it probably will, but it's based on a couple of assumptions. The biggest assumption is that all the radiators in your house are the right size for the rooms they are in. That means that each radiator gives off exactly the right amount of heat for the room it's in when it has a 12 degree temperature difference across it. However, if your heating system is like mine, where all the radiators were sized with a combination of experience and gut feel, this process won't always work as you'd expect. Let me explain why by working through a simple example. Here we have a simple two bedroom house, which I've just realized reminds me of Monopoly. Anyway, on the ground floor, we have a kitchen and a utility. And on the first floor, we have bedroom one, bedroom two, an office and a bathroom. Each room has a single radiator and I've color coded the radiators so you can see which ones are the same size and shape. I'll now add in the target temperatures and this is how hot we want each room to be when the heating is on. You can see I will want the kitchen at 21, the utility at 18, the two bedrooms at 18, my office will be warmer at 21 and finally the bathroom will be the warmest at 22. The target temperatures are important as they're one of the factors that tell us how much heat we're going to need in each of the rooms. To keep me focused on radiators, I'm going to ignore things like insulation that impact the heat requirement for each room, and I'm just going to jump to a final figure. We can now see the kitchen needs three kilowatts of heat, the utility needs one kilowatt, we need 1.2 kilowatts bedroom one, 800 watts bedroom two, one and a half kilowatts in the office, and 700 watts in the bathroom. These figures are made up uh, and they're quite exaggerated, but it's just to give you an idea of the spread of heat requirements across all the rooms in the house. Let's look at the same thing now in a slightly different way. This is a simple diagram of our heating system. I have a boiler which is delivering heat into the house and I have the six radiators that you'll remember from the floor plan drawing. Beside each radiator is a slider, which represents the position of the lock shield. We can see the temperature difference across the radiator, and we can see the room that the radiator is in, along with the heat requirement. The radiators are also color coded, just like the drawing, so you can see which ones are the same size and shape. I've already followed the basic radiator balancing process, and each of the rads now has a DT of 12 degrees. Let's work upwards through the radiators. The kitchen needs three kilowatts and the radiator is delivering four kilowatts. So that room is eventually gonna overheat. The utility needs a kilowatt, but we're only supplying 800 watts. So that room's gonna be a little bit too cold. Bedroom one, again, we're gonna overshoot that room by quite a lot. Bedroom two, we're gonna overshoot that by quite a lot. The office is gonna feel colder than we want it to be. And finally, the bathroom it's going to be slightly too warm. So even though we've followed that basic radiator balancing process, we're just not delivering the right amount of heat into the rooms. We may have balanced all the radiators perfectly, 
but we haven't balanced the heat. Let's do that now, starting with the kitchen. As our radiator is putting out too much heat, we want to make it colder. To do that, we want to reduce the amount of heat that's flowing into the radiator, so we're going to close the lock shield slightly. This has the effect of reducing the output of the radiator, but you can also see that it has widened the temperature difference, or DT, across that radiator. Our utility room radiator actually isn't putting out enough heat, so we need to get more heat into that radiator, so we do that by opening the lock shield a little bit. And that has the opposite effect, and it actually narrows the DT across the radiator. For bedroom one, again, we want to close that down. And we can see again that the DT actually widens. For bedroom two, we want to close that down as well. For the office, we want to open that up. We need more heat, so we're going to, we're going to open the valve. And that, will narrow, and that will narrow the DT. And then again, for the bathroom, it's pretty much there, but we could tweak that a little bit. Uh, we could just bring its output down slightly. With that done, the heat is now balanced. And you'll notice that none of our radiators have DT12 anymore. That was a very simple example, and I'm leaving out a lot of details. The interplay between radiators is really important due to pressure and resistance in the pipes. Opening up one radiator can reduce flow to another radiator, which means you need to open up that radiator to get the same output, which means you need to open up another radiator, and so on. This is why knowing the order that your radiators heat up can help, because it means you can start at the very beginning and make a change, which will impact the next radiator, and you make a change, and it impacts the next radiator, and so on. That said, I hope that you see that the process of balancing by DT won't always give you the outcome that you want. The basic process, balancing by DT12, is an excellent starting point, but you do need to tweak each room's radiator individually to get the comfort level that you want. Right, I'll wrap up there. Hopefully that's been a useful example. Remember, all my figures are made up and I've exaggerated them for the purposes of the example. So do take them with grain of salt. Most of the time you'll find radiators are too big anyway. And I think that's down to caution on the side of installers. It's better for your customers to be too warm than to be too cold. I also used DT12 in that example, as that's the figure you'll mostly see across all these internet guides, but that will vary based on uh, your flow temperature, your pump speeds, and if you have a heat pump, for example, that DT will usually be down around five. If you are having a go at balancing your own system, most of those lock shields that you'll find are pretty crap, and they only really take effect in the last quarter turn, something called valve authority, um, but cheaper valves are usually uh, are pretty rubbish. So experiment with your valves and just get a feel for them. Knowing that might save you some head scratching when things aren't you know, behaving as you'd expect. If you've enjoyed this video, please do click the like button uh, to help the YouTube algorithm promote my video. If you enjoy these sorts of videos, please check out some of my other videos. And if you enjoy them, please subscribe. Otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom, and thanks for watching.